Hi folks, welcome to this video on periodization. So, periodization could be uh, a big topic in terms of um, marks, could be quite a short topic, so we're going to go over all the terminology and, and deal with this little video as if it was to come up for a decent amount of marks so we can cover all bases and get all the key definitions down. So periodization, essentially, what is it? So periodization is dividing the year into training phases. So, you know, week by week, month by month, what you are actually aiming for. Now, I've copied this off the internet, this little diagram here. I've copied it for a couple of reasons. One, because it gives a lot of the terminology that we need. But secondly, because I haven't got a clue what sport is for, or which sport is for, should I say. For example, if you look here, the competitive phase is December, January. So I don't know which sport only has a competitive phase over December and January. But, you know... It's worth talking about, it's worth thinking about because it allows us to try and figure this out, I suppose, as we go along. Um, because who are the people who are going to periodise a training programme? Who are the ones who are going to design a training programme to try and build uh, key parts into their structure? Well, it's those that need to peak for major events. So as it's for, uh, aimed at peaking at World Championships and Olympics, here's a different example of a periodised programme, which, you know, maybe shows it a little bit better. For example, what you've got here, so as it's strength phases for a distance swimmer, let's say, what you can see here is they're going to start getting ready their prep period, September, October, November, December time. They're going to be competing in their first competition, January and February. And then they're going to get into a second prep period, March, April, May, ready for their second competition period in June and July, back end of July. Why? What's going to happen July time? That's when the Olympics are going to be. Now, what is this talking about? A first competition period and a second competition period. Don't forget, many swimmers, athletes, gymnasts, rowers have to qualify for the Olympics in the same year that the Olympic Games take place. And this is an example of what we call a double periodised year, where they've got to peak twice. Once for qualification in his first competitive period, and secondly, at the actual Olympic Games. So that's exactly what we're seeing in this second little um, periodised training plan here. So what both of these have done is they've taken the year, broken it down into blocks in order that you can peak at the right time for a World Championships, for an Olympics. And that can often involve having to do what we call a double periodised year where you've got to qualify and then compete at the major games in the same year. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a few of these terms forward and then we're going to define them so we know exactly uh, what we need to say about periodisation. It is worth saying, though, by mentioning this, this, and this, you are picking up marks. You are picking up marks by saying all three of those. So we've both uh, brought both of these programmes forward onto this slide, sorry, so we can now look at, you know, some of the key terminology and exactly what we're talking about. So the aim is to, peak, uh, to break the training down into phases and blocks. We're trying to peak for World Championships or Olympics. And in some instances, in many instances, we're trying to do double periodisation or double periodise where we peak twice within the same season for qualification and then for competition at major games for the benefit of both of those. So how can we split this season down into phases? What are the phases? Now, splitting the season down like this, you're going to see some terms that you're familiar with, ones that you're less familiar with. But, you know, that's, that's kind of the point of this video, point out the familiar to the unfamiliar. At the start, we're going to have a preparation phase, also known as pre-season. All of you that play sport know about pre-season, OK? It's about developing base fitness levels. Now, we can, in pre-season, what we generally do is we include a general conditioning phase, which is quantity over quality. That's the part of the season that any of you who play a lot of sport will know about, where it is just hard graft, hill running, long distance runs, no matter what sport you play, doing lots of heavy, boring, dull, but hard fitness training in order to develop a good baseline fitness level. What you then do after a few weeks of that is you refine it a little bit and then go quality over quantity. Start to do a bit of your sharpness and your speed and agility and quickness and things like that. So in the diagrams above, what we're seeing is, let me just change the colour of my pen, what we're seeing is this part here, the preparation phase or pre-season, it's taking place here in this person and we're having one pre-season there and almost a second pre-season, mid-season there in terms of building up ready, you know, what we said, remember, this is a double period as year. you've built up, you've built up and built up your fitness ready for qualifiers, then you've had a bit of time off, we're going to come to that T in a minute, and then you've built up and you've built up and you've built up, and then you're ready to compete at the major Olympics, 
okay? Follow that, so your pre-season is followed by in-season or your competition phase, okay? And as you might expect, as you've done a lot of the bulk of the hard work pre-season, in-season about maintaining your fitness and just getting your skill right. So your fitness should be there by the start you get to pre-season and it should just be about refining what you're doing. It will include in-season what we call a tapering phase where you decrease the intensity of training for 10 to 21 days before a major event. That is so you don't go into that major event injured, fatigued, anything like that. Now, you might be thinking, what about reversibility? I'm going to lose my fitness in that 10 to 21 days. You're not. Not in 10 to 21 days. If you've had a good pre-season and you've worked your backside off and you've been competing regularly and maintained your fitness during the in-season, during the competition phase, you will not lose anything by having 10 to 21 days off before your major event. You're going to gain by that, by making sure the body is fully refreshed and fully ready to go before you compete. So, like we said, this competition or this in-season phase, we could draw lines up here. It's there. Like I said, mysteriously, the competition phase for this random sport is December to January. I don't know of a sport like that, but it's a talking point, if nothing else. And as you can see, you have got your competition phases here for qualifiers and there for the actual major event, okay? And it is just worth saying that this tapering that we're talking about will take place within the competition periods. So you will get the day of your competition or the day of your qualifier, count back 10 or 21 days, and you'll taper from that point onwards. Some people say, why 10 to 21? Well, you know, if you've had a good pre-season, you've stayed injury-free, and there's been no problems, you might give yourself 21 days off. But if you've had a pre-season, you've had the odd injury, you've missed the odd competition, you might only want to give yourself 10 days off. Just make sure you stay sharper a little bit longer. Finally then, we've got our transitional post-season. And as you can see, the transitional post-season is taking place here in this sport. And we've got two little ones here, one there and one there. Transition phase, also known as post-season, i.e. the season is now over. You are giving your body lots of active rest and recovery so that when you start pre-season for the following season, your body is fully rested, fully prepared and ready to go. So by mentioning all these points, that's getting you marks on the exam, how the season could be split down. If you can't remember preparation phase and competition phase and transition phase, remember pre-season, in-season and post-season. It's the same mark on the mark scheme. So that's how we periodise our years. There's a couple of other things that we're just going to quickly mention just to finish it off. Just three other terms that you need to be familiar with and you can see them, particularly on the training uh, programme up here. Macro cycle, meso cycle and micro cycle. The macro cycle is your long term training plan. So as you can see this one at the top, there is the micro cycle, i.e. everything. The, the, the pre-season, the competition period and the transition phase all clumped together is known as your macro cycle. These are mesocycles here, a little bit ambitious, because what we're basically saying is mesocycles are blocks of two to eight weeks. If you look at this here, they've put a mesocycle as a block of about four months. That's not correct. That's not true. A mesocycle is a block of two to eight weeks. What a mesocycle is, is a specific aim. So you might do a four-week mesocycle on power development. Or a five-week mesocycle on stamina development. So a mesocycle typically has a specific aim of something that you're trying to achieve within that period of time. Hence why it's two to eight weeks. You might want to spend longer on some things, not as long on other things in terms of your fitness and skill development. And finally, a microcycle is an individual training week. And again, you know, it's not realistic. Here. It's looking like training months, but it's an individual training week. But even this plan here, that full thing there is the macro cycle. These will represent mesocycles, and within them, there will be individual microcycles, individual training weeks. So that's all the terminology and everything you need to know about periodization of training. Hope you found this video useful, folks.